Hi, thanks for joining us for your latest Hurricane Tracker app video update recorded Saturday, August 17th, 2013 at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, we want to start you guys off today with a look at the uh, Atlantic Basin. We still have Invest 92L here uh, located in the central Gulf of Mexico. Development chances for this system are down to 10% in the low range. We do have a weak tropical wave with a very uh, weak disorganized area of low pressure. Uh, so basically just a tropical wave that will continue to move off towards the west. It likely will not develop, but a few days ago some of the computer models, notably the CMC model, was developing this and moving it off towards the west-northwest. So it's something that will be watched uh, nevertheless. Of course, we still have Tropical Storm Aaron, which is forecasted to weaken back to a depression and move north-northwest here and staying out in the open Atlantic. Just still going to create some, some extra waves for the fish out there. And finally, we have a new vigorous tropical wave that is exiting the coast of Africa. This will continue to push towards the west. And some of the computer models want to develop this once it gets to about this point. Uh, sometime early to middle parts of next week. So we'll take a closer look at that wave here in just a few moments. But let's first take a look at the latest advisory for Tropical Depression Aaron. Uh, sorry, excuse me, Tropical Storm Aaron. Maximum sustained winds are at 40 miles per hour. It is moving off towards the northwest at 14. And again, uh, by Tuesday, the National Hurricane Center is forecasting the system to dissipate into a remnant low. All right, let's take a closer look at uh, that pesky disturbance, Invest 92L here in the Central Atlantic. You can see it's uh, right off the bat, it's not very well organized. It's a very uh, elongated area of low pressure, and it's kind of being strung out like a rubber band, so to speak. Uh, so we don't have any one concentrated areas of thunderstorms that's trying to develop. Just one big mess here that's going to continue to push a bunch of rain up here into the northeastern uh, Gulf Coast region. You'll notice here over southeast Texas and southwest Louisiana, uh, we do have some very dry stable air that is uh, pushing in with the uh, shortwave trough of low pressure that's digging south. And this will keep this region mainly rain free as this system tries to uh, move off towards the west over the next couple of days. But again, most of the moisture we believe is going to fall east of New Orleans and basically down in this region here. And uh, we'll take a look at the uh, forecasted rainfall potential here in just a moment. Yesterday we showed you this low level vorticity map. Uh, it looked more like uh, Aaron's does, a ball of deep red uh, area showing strong vorticity. Today it's not showing that, it's all strung out. So that is one sign that conditions are unfavorable for development. And we also have uh, increasing wind shear here over the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, again, with these factors in play, it looks very unlikely that this system is going to develop. And if we take a closer look here, you can see the dry stable air moving in. We expect the Northeast Gulf to be wet at least through Monday. Uh, overall, this, this axis of moisture is going to shift to the west, and uh, we may be able to see some rain sneak up into coastal Texas, but even that may be unlikely at this point uh, due to this uh, dry, stable air that's pushing southeast here across the Gulf of Mexico. So we could still pick up several more inches here across extreme parts of southeast Louisiana, coastal Mississippi, southwestern Alabama, and of course the Florida Panhandle. Here's a look at the latest radar. You can see plenty of moisture uh, over the southeast United States. It is beginning to weaken, and then we would expect that by morning uh, the precipitation will be on the increase again here over the uh, northeastern Gulf Coast. Here's a look at the strong uh, wave that is coming off of the coast of Africa. You can see there's a little bit of vorticity, a little bit of spin in the atmosphere, but not very much. It's still very disorganized. It basically has uh, two areas of main convection. And uh, the computer models are showing that the system should move off towards the west. And once it gets uh, here in about this area, uh, early to middle parts of next week, it looks like it may have a better chance of developing. But we'll keep a very close eye on this as it does have some promising signs. And again, we're giving this a 50% chance of developing 
uh, during the next uh, five days. So we'll keep you updated on that. Finally today, we want to look, uh, take a look at the long range for the last week of August into the first week of September. The GFS America model, the last several runs, has been consistent. We're showing several systems lining up here across the Atlantic and generally moving, uh, excuse this here, let me remove this uh, thing that just popped up, sorry about that. Uh, but basically the um, GFS model is lining up systems here around the last week of August to the first week of September and moving them generally west-northwest under this large area of high pressure. Now remember if you have high pressure situated out here it makes it very difficult or more unlikely for these storms to, to uh, move northwest uh, and, and stay out to sea. Now sometimes they can find a weakness in here maybe between a ridge and sometimes get steered out to sea. But if we have a system approaching the southeast United States as the model is forecasting here on September 2nd, uh, if we have a high pressure situated over the northwest Atlantic, that would almost guarantee a landfall somewhere along the eastern United States coast in this range. So again, this is very far out. Take this very lightly at this point. There are many, many, many model runs to go. And we will keep these maps updated in the model watch feed of the Hurricane Tracker app. We usually post the models every day if they do show something. But if you live along the Gulf Coast, eastern Gulf Coast, or the eastern seaboard of the United States, just please keep in mind we're entering the peak of the hurricane season. It does appear the pattern is becoming favorable for more systems to develop push and push west-northwest, generally towards the United States. Thanks so much for watching our latest video update. We'll be back with another one tomorrow. If you'd like to have all these maps uh, on demand and handy, uh, they're all available in the Hurricane Tracker app at hertracker.com. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend.